Yeah, so like I said, this is the first competition. Hi, lords, ladies and gentlemen. Now it is a cold and windy February morning. It's actually quite mild and nice, but we all know what February is normally like. I know you can feel the cold on your fingers. I know you can feel the cold on your ears. So it's only right that we make as much noise. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open. Welcome to today's vlog. Hope you're all okay. So yes, yeah, so we're at a very, very quiet Warwick Castle, aren't we? It is really it's quiet. Look. As you can see, if I come it's round, empty. it's really, really empty. There's supposed to be the Festival of Archery on, but I was driving past one of the schools because there's a school nearby. It looks like they're all at school because you can see kids in uniform and stuff. It's just crazy how... Um, Sometimes vary from place to place, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really is. So, I hope fingers crossed the um, Festival of Archery event still on. If not, I can't imagine it's been here that long, to be honest with you. But who knows? Um, it might be busy, we'll say it might get busy a bit later on and stuff. But if it doesn't, we're just going to explore a nice empty water class, aren't we, Sammy? Yeah. Sammy's going to try and vlog again this morning, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you just cleared a whole load of space off his phone as well. So, yeah, at least the sun's come out as well, because when we was driving down, it was quite foggy. We've gone to Warwickshire, and yeah, the sun's out. So come and join us for hopefully the Festival of Archery at yeah, Warwick Yeah, as you can see, it's lovely to see the sun shining over the castle. Apparently the first event starts at half ten in the courtyard. So we're going to go around and sort that's like in a minute. So yeah, so this is a school trip here. Come on, sweetheart! Yeah, well, my darling, we're just going to take our time today, aren't we? So, yeah, he did really well with his He was asleep by really early last night, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So, it made him quarter past seven this morning. Um, he was awake, so we can't have it all. Go to bed early or go to bed late, so. But also, he gets to sleep. That's all that matters, isn't it, sweetheart? Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we're going to leave the horrid history to most for later. Um, Again, you already got those pop badges there. They're exactly the same, so sam has got millions and millions of those. I'll do that later. Yeah, the first, like I said, the first pro. The thing about today is mm. going around to see all the events and stuff mm. they've got on and see what they're actually like. But yeah, you can see there's a school party here. So, and that's the Halloween walkthrough in there. Come on then, Ben Sita. <laughs> the grass isn't growing back yet from when they had the ice rink, is it? I'm really quite surprised, you know, they didn't put, like, artificial... <laughs> They're probably going to put in turf on it. Like I said, I'm quite surprised, you know, they don't put artificial grass down or some sort of protective thing over it. Because it happens every year when the ice cream goes up for Christmas. It happens always exactly the same. So, yes, yeah, so we're just about to go through into the castle grounds now and see the port colours. And so, can you remember the Midsummer Carnival they had here last year, yeah. where they rose them all up? But the queens come in and stuff like that, and there's all up, up along here. That is back on the channel, so um, I guess they want to link it. I'm not too quite sure if they're doing it this year again or not. Are you? I haven't seen it advertised yet. So, so it was Dragon Slayer. We've done Dragon Slayer in the summer. That was really, really good. We really loved that. We said. I think they are actually, they seem to be doing loads and loads of concerts because I noticed in the toilets there was advertising Gwen Stefani for, the, for June. So, yeah, Gwen Stefani. Come on, Westlife, come here, please. We're not, nice big, massive outdoor fit venue for you. Okay. But yeah, so we like I said, just about to enter the castle. So, yes, they've certainly done this up different this year, haven't they? Stuff like that. Here we go. Here's our timetable over here and what's on. Got flags everywhere, we've got some outside the actual castle as well. So, you're gonna see what's on in a second. Come with me, 
Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, this, is this what happened last year where they had those people shooting those arrows at one another? Is there? I can't remember actually, to be honest with you. But here we go. Yeah, half ten. Meet the teams at half ten. We've got the central courtyard and festival of archery round one. There we go. This is what is actually on today. Here we go. So, yes, yeah, so we beat the arch of the final shoot downs on at half past three. So, yes, yeah, so we wait here till half past ten and we can actually see then who's. Which is about half past ten now, isn't it? And then there's. Oh, we go. Over here. So, we walk round over here. You can so, see them all over here. the first competition. Hi, lords, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Now, it is a cold and windy February morning. It's actually quite mild and nice, but we all know what February is normally like. I know you can feel the cold on your fingers. I know you can feel the cold on your ears. So, it's only right that we make as much noise as we possibly can. We get our energy going when we say, Welcome to Warwick Castle! <laughs> Which means, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Festival of Archery! We have an absolutely fantastic day for all of you today. The Festival of Archery 2023. It's only getting bigger and better every single year. And what a day we have. Now, before we begin, you are going to notice that myself and the gentleman to my right hand side, we're going to be talking a fair amount today. For we are your cup pairs. We are your guides for this day of, uh, of festivities and archery, ladies and gentlemen. So please make some noise for the person on my right hand side. This here is Master Philip. Thank you very much, thank you. Over here, my partner in crime for the day. Please make some noise for Master G! <laughs> now, very, very shortly, we'll be introducing the teams that are very carefully waiting over here by our tent. But, ladies and gentlemen, before that, we thought we'd best tell you what is in store for you all throughout your day. Now, of course, we are here to meet our teams, but the festival properly kicks off at 11 o'clock in this area with round number one. What's round number one? Philip? Round number one is closest to the centre. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly what you'd expect from an archery competition. Yep. Our archers are all going to be loosing towards the centre of the target behind us here. In various heats, ladies and gentlemen, our archers will be able to show you a test of their accuracy. But shortly after that, we will have round number two, which is... The crossbow round! Which will just be over there in the black and a red tent. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, our archers bringing crossbows into the action this year, loosing them at various types of targets that you will see in the tents over there. But does that sound like a lot of stuff so far, ladies and gentlemen? Because there no. is more. There is a lot more than that. Don't you worry for you children over there who are still yet to be satisfied by the amount of archery we have. There is also round three, which is the speed shoot. <laughs> That's right. Like this and that's exactly what it says on the box, ladies and Our archers all been able to show you the proper power of the longbow. Yes, they are good. Yes, they are strong. Yes, they are accurate. But also, they are speedy. Our archers would be expected to lose one arrow every five seconds on the battlefield as a minimum standard. And you will see if our archers are capable of such a feat in the speed shooting round. But immediately after the speed shooting round, there is another. And that one is called... The Cloud Shoot! Yeah, I know, so. We, we kind of know at this point, ladies and gentlemen, if we put our hands up in the air, you're going to cheer for it. I like the silence. No one knows what a cloud shoot is unless you know what archery is, ladies and Basically, our archers shooting at a 45 degree angle into the sky, letting their arrows loose at a distance, aiming for a target halfway down our beautiful pageant field or over by the Peacock Garden, if you know the place. We'll be there at 2 o'clock, ready for that round as well. But. There is still even more than that, because those will give us lots of points so we can have the final round, which is called... The Grand Finale! <laughs> and the Grand Finale, ladies yes. and gentlemen, will be right here. Our archers, again, testing their metal against one of the most difficult targets that you will be able to see. One of them right up there on top of the mount. So make sure you're here at 3.30. Does that sound like a full action-packed day for you all? Well, there is more. Ooh, there is. You see, they said there's far more archery to be done than that. What else are we going to do, Philip? Well, at one o'clock, we are going to do the Bowman Show. 
That is right, Leisha. You're going to hear us talking an awful lot of it. You're going to hear us taking the mickey out of our archers when they miss, Leisha. And it's only fair that we stand out here and we show you that we can do it as well. If you want to learn a little bit something about the bow, you want to see some more shooting, we are going to be on the opposite side of the wall, over there on the Bowman Zone at 1 o'clock. But there's even more than that, ladies and gentlemen, because oh, there, is. there is also the Family Quiz! That's right, Leisha. Look, warm response. That, so what's going to happen at that point there is we're going to invite you all to come and join us. You will answer questions. The questions will turn into arrows that our archers will be able to loose at their targets. But, ladies and gentlemen, there is even more than that. Oh, there right is. Over there. What else we got? We have Beat the Archer! <laughs> now, Beat the Archer is a very special round indeed, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a have-a-go archery range operating throughout the entire day today through the black gate and halfway down the path on the right hand side for a small extra cost you can test out the longbow yourselves you can try out and if you do an extra special good job then you will be invited to come here at three o'clock to shoot against one of our archers in a competition for everyone now later the family quiz have a go archery beat the archer this is where we all invite you all to become parts of your team all of the things that you do today will score points for your chosen team. So whilst we're about to announce our teams on, you get to choose who you support and you will actually become part of them for the points you score throughout the day will immediately go onto their tally as well. But I think they've heard enough from both of us. So I think they have. Friends, I think we need to meet the teams. Would you like to meet the teams? Yeah! Who's winning first? Brilliant. Well, throughout the week so far of the Festival of Archery, we have had a father and daughter team. However, today is special because we have a father and son team. That is the blue team! We have Samuel and we have Jim! That's right, Jim never runs anywhere. So here we go, have a little mosey on over here and there. Jim taking his time, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, Pretty good archers, as you'll see throughout the whole day. We've managed to rouse Jim out of bed this morning, ready to see if he's able to shoot for you all later. And okay, now just by looking at them, who's going to cheer for the blue team? <laughs> but do not fear, for we have more teams than that, ladies and gentlemen. But he's shorter. One is not facing in the right direction at all. Please make some noise for the red team! Then get this way, this way. We have James and we have Jonathan. That's right, fantastic archers. The red team actually been victorious in yesterday's day's worth of shooting, but that does not mean a thing, ladies and gentlemen, because today we have John here instead. So, <coughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be good. They've been shooting rather well all week long. Who's going to make some noise for the red team? Yeah. Who's next, Philip? Well, we've had our father and son team. It's about time we meet the father and daughter team. Please, put your hands together. Make some noise for the gold team! We have Richard and we have Liz. It's gold. There you go. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Richard is the one with the beard. Liz is the one on the left-hand side. If you didn't Again, know. Shooting rather well today. The ones to watch in the uh, clout shooting round, in particular, the distance round. They've been shooting rather well. Make some noise, please, for the gold team. <laughs> and there is one team left to come. Brilliant. There, There is. I mean, I almost forgotten because they blend in to the background so well because they are more used to hunting rather than target practice. But please, put your hands together for the green team! If you can see them. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Master blended. James and Master Christoph both been shooting fantastically well for a long time. James himself on the right side, one of the best archery instructors in the whole of the town down on the Have A Go Archery Range, ladies and gentlemen. A man with a lot of experience. You just have to look at his face to be able to see that. But over there, Christoph next to him, a very keen hunter, been shooting rather well for right as well. A very good team to watch, I think, today, ladies and gentlemen. So, who's going to cheer for the green team? <laughs> no, we've introduced our teams over there. We've told you to cheer based on how they look, but we think it's only right that if you're still sat on the fence that we invite them to step forwards to tell you a few things about themselves and try to win you over to their course. I think we'll start with the blue team. Our Feel archers free. are all going to step up to the shooting line. They're going to loose their arrows towards the target. We'll have one person from each team loosing down the line. The people who get the closest, the top two, will go through to the semi-finals. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll keep on going through that way and then we'll have a final Again, it's nice and simple. We'll show you as we go. But 
let's see who supports who. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise if you are going to support the blue team. Do we have any sponsors for the green team? Who's going to support the gold team? And who's going to support the red team? Yay! Well, ladies and gentlemen, gold team going out there have a nice early start, but let's see if any of your minds will change once you see our team shoot. So, archers, please, first archers step up to the line. Everyone else, clear out to the sides for me, please, and take a knee. So, ladies and gentlemen, archery itself is a pretty noble sport. Whilst many people could shoot them, it was really only the peasantry who would do any well with the bow. They would go lutz and shoot well. They would practice and practice and practice. And hopefully now you will see the fruits of the labour. Our archers have all been shooting well all week. But, of course, when it comes to this round now, with all of your eyes on them, the pressure will begin to build. We will shoot down the line. I will announce their shots one by one, and then at a certain time, I'll ask them to loose at will. That doesn't mean they're going to shoot at somebody called William. That means they're going to be shooting under their own steam and their own speed. We're going to start down the far end there with Jonathan, who's going to draw and loose in his own time. Very nice shot. I told you he was the talent. <laughs> Richard steps up in your own time. Miss from James. Miss. Jim. So over there, Jonathan's shooting at his own speed. He's not waiting for me, but that's okay because Richard will wait. Good shot there from Rich. James got his eye in now into the target there as well. Jim loses. Oh, Jim, you may lose at will. So, Nathan, you'll see that when all of your eyes are on it, it's actually really difficult to go and get that arrows towards the target. Our archers are all very good shots, but sometimes when you've got a couple of hundred people staring at the back of your head, it's not. So now I've said to Lucent, Will, you will see the accuracy will actually begin to build because that pressure is not on them now. They are just loosing as fast or as slow as they want. They're taking their time, they're looking at the target, and they're putting their arrows in. A beautiful arrow we've got in there as well, I can see in the centre already. Okay, sorting them in for the boys. They'll hop up into the bush there. Once you've finished up, they'll take a knee, turn away from the uh, shooting line so I can see. Our uh, arrow's going in. Good yeah. shooting well for Jim. One final arrow for Jim. Huh? There you go, make some noise for the blue team! Woo! That's it, give him some encouragement. Camera! Ready, blue! Oh! Hey! Incredible shot there, Ladies and gentlemen, the good thing about archery is sometimes it only takes one arrow to get you into the next round. Will that be it for the Blues? Now Philip is going to step up and he's going to check the scores, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go over it with a fine tooth comb. He's going to have a look to see how it goes. Philip, whilst you're there now, can you see? Have we got two winners? We have indeed. Going through to the next round, we have Greens. And with that amazing last shot. We have got the Blues! Yes. Showing it is all about just one arrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll put you into the next round. So, in the two winners, if we have you over here, the two runners up, I think, if we go over to the on the far side to relax for a bit. Now, six arrows, please, out of your baskets, into your ground quivers for me, please, archers. We're going to mix up the shooting line for a few minutes here, ladies and gentlemen. Our archers will go back through. If we could please have. Oh, let's, let's have. Um, Yay! That's it. Gold. So the blue team won the first round. Should we go look around the house now? Yeah. It's not 12 o'clock yet. Yeah, there's a quarter past 12. So, yeah. Quarter past 11. Yeah, it was really good. It was. Yeah. This is down there where they're con it's construction of Trevgile, aren't they? That's going to be back for the spring, which is going to be nice to actually see it um, back in action. I know you mentioned before they had issues with it, and they didn't think they could actually get it done. So, which is nice, going to see that fly again. So, yes, yeah, so I'm not too quite sure what we're going to do now. Obviously, the Birds of Prey show is around here at 12. So, I don't know if you want Peacock Tea Room's place. I think we ought to. It's. 25 past 11. Oh. Yeah. Go through a tweet and come back down here. Because normally we're going to have the fish and chip shop place down here. As you can see, it's all. 
because there's nothing really going on. There isn't at the minute, so I smash them. You see, they've got it all blocked off down there for health and safety reasons, which is good. So, yeah, we'll come back here at 12 o'clock this afternoon. We'll watch the trouble, Jay, going back yeah, here. so we'll come yeah. back here for 12 o'clock. Yeah, big pendulum thing. Mm. Sally, we'll come back here <laughs> for 12 o'clock. What's Bears of Fraser? Then we'll watch round two of the archery. Yeah, yeah. yeah? to the um, conservatory tea rooms for a few snacks and stuff because obviously the fish and chips place isn't open so yeah I must admit you cannot go wrong sitting outside here nice sunny day looking at the fountain of the water feature in there the gardens and stuff hear the bears in the trees can't you and then over here you see you've got the dreaded peacocks they can stay there out the way can't they they are all up here actually. Can you blame them though? It's nice and peaceful up here though, isn't it? So yeah, Ben's got a gluten-free sandwich. I've got a um, cheese plums here. Got some cakes here. And we just went for your toasty, aren't we? Sam didn't want a toasty, he just wanted some cake. So... I want my cake. Your cake's here, have it in a minute. Hey Ben, is that nice? Your little sandwich nice, yeah? Mm. Mr Peacock, stay away. We're not feeding you today. There's five. We're not, we're not sharing our lunch with you. No. Look at the look. You're thinking, where's he going? We've got five. Got one there. Oh yeah, there's three there. Oh, you got the other one down near by Ben, because obviously Ben's just dropped some crate crumbs. How, how did the peacocks just to go into the tea house? Yeah, course, I'm quite surprised they don't go in there actually, Sam, into the tea house actually. Got two over there. Yeah, they might go in there. There he is. What are you doing? Hey? You're thinking, oh, where's mine? Look! <laughs> That's what it's going with now. I wonder if they like um, crusts of bread. I've got, I've got some across my sandwiches. <laughs> so, say now, they, they were here a lot longer than what we were, though, weren't they? So, Mr. Beacock! Hello! There's another one over there as well. Crossbows into the tent here. Their crossbows very well known for their accuracy and, of course, their power. But, ladies and gentlemen, to keep you all nice and safe, we thought we'd change it up a little bit today. We thought we'd use some good hunting crossbows, nice low poundage, low poundage is the correct English, okay, and aiming at the target. I went over to the Earl of Warwick himself and I said, My lord, we need a decent set of targets to be able to lose that. And he said, James, use my campaign tent. It's fresh from the campaign, so over there it's a little bit mucky. I don't mind if it gets shot up a little bit, so you can use that. So, that is what we are decided to do, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to use the Earl's campaign technique. We will now show you our range. I want one of those cups and put my tea in. Earl's campaign <laughs> Walk your dreams for the next couple of weeks. Okay. As our they into the tent that we are going to be loosing at. You can see that the tent is set up just like the old campaign tent. His armor on the right hand side, he's training dummy on the left hand side there as well. So we'll swing his weapon as well. But, ladies and gentlemen, you can also have some different colored targets. That is what our bowmen are going to be shooting at now. Now, I will tell you the point system. There are two big helmets on the tables, they could shoot at them. That there will score their team one point. They show and you've got the blue targets are worth two points, the green targets worth three points, the little gold targets are worth four points, and as yesterday was Valentine's Day, we've got some hearts hanging there as well. They will score them three points for a shot, ladies and gentlemen. Sir Philip's just over here, he's got his sharpies and his It's pretty simple. We're going to call the teams forward one at a time, they will lose to the targets, you will shout, you will cheer, you will boo, you will heckle, you will do whatever you want to do, ladies and to try and put your enemy team off if you want to, and we'll see how well they're doing. But before we begin, you have all seen one round already, some of you are fresh for this, and it's up to you now to decide who it is you are going to be cheering for. Who's going to cheer for the Queen team? Yeah. <laughs> two people over here. Yeah, nice guys, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right there, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going to shoot for the gold team? Yeah. 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 Hey! Hey! The blue team! Yeah. 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 Ye
take a part for the green team. But later, <laughs> we are going to say, guys, so I think with that, it's only right that the green team step up over here and they shoot at the targets. They will take two crossbow bolts with them each and they will lose both of them in turn. So, they will step forward from section. And what we'll make them do is we'll get them real quick, they do, the crossbow itself, again, is famed for being a little bit more accurate than the longbow itself. It takes less training to be able to use it as well. And I'm trying to, in between the shooting, they turn, try and give you a bit more information. But it looks like Chris is loaded up, he is ready to go. He announces his target. Helmet at the back. Helmet at the back. He misses. And no. He hits the nut of the owl in the nether region. <laughs> Not sure he'd be particularly happy about that. Because all that mail, it probably would solve a blow like that. Although the earl would be walking funny for a week with a shot like that, I think. James, he's step forward, what are you going to shoot for? No, no, no. The helmet at the back. The helmet at the back. The big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! Oh! So there for the green team. Now, I did say that the crossbow was accurate, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Showing us this very shortly, is uh, Chris over there going on magic for the same targets, if I know well. Uh, how many on the left? There we go. There we go! Yay! Scoring a point for his team. There you go, that helmet is down. That's it. What are you going to go for, James? The other helmet. He's going to go for the helmet. <laughs> the green's trying to get some easy scores on the doors. When he hits, oh. oh. there you go. One point to the greens. They leave the crossroads there and they push the way over to this side. Now I know this is going to be a hard score to compete with, but I think we'll bring up the red team next. So the red. I love the really easy. You literally point it and you click it. Okay. In fact, it's got a pretty famous story along associated with the crossbow. That was Richard the Lionheart. We all heard Richard the Lionheart. Yeah. 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 Rick, that's right, Richard the Second. And he took a crossbow bolt through the neck. Blade, Jerry. It wasn't very nice, but it's in quite a simple fashion. Imagine you're here on top of the castle, okay? Richard the Lionheart is attacking on the outside. You have been there, you've been shooting your crossbows the entire time, and it's time for you to eat. The cook, ladies and gentlemen, bought them some bows, but let's have a look over here. Who have we got next? Jonathan, who are you going for? Uh, Helmet on the table. Helmet on the table! And Whoa, it's <laughs> There you go, that's all right. <laughs> 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 No point for that. There you go, James. The blue house on the left, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go to the blue house behind the barrel. Oh! Yay! Two points for the red team. Woo! There you go, Jonathan. He gets steps up. He pulls up. He's going to go for. Oh, he's going to go straight. Four points in his station. This! Oh, they're putting it to the target, okay? It's heavy. Better than any of the shots he did on the coastal sunset range on the target. Okay. Right, same target as Jonathan. He's going to go for the board as well, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Oh! oh. Sending that bolt to over there. But they've got a score of the points over there. So that's two points over there for Red Team. So back to Richard the Lionheart. Okay, the cook, he brings them some food at the top. The crossbow men, they go, oh, quick, some food. They put their crossbow on the stand. Okay, what happens though, that cook, he's sitting there, he's waiting to get all of his bowls back. He goes, oh, a crossbow. I'm going to pick that up. He picks up that crossbow. He looks over the wall and he goes, oh, I'm going to try and shoot that guy. When he hits outside, he does. He takes Richard the Lionheart right in the net place to and kills him outright. He do need to be trained to use the crossbow, as you can probably tell. The gold team, if you come and step up for me, please. Okay, but it's actually in the loading where the problem is. You can tell a crossbow, you can tell its strength by how well loaded uh, uh, uh. it is. You can see that stirrup on the back. That stirrup where they put their foot into load, that shows you that it's a low poundage crossbow because that means they can pull it up with their arms, they can pull it up with their back muscles. It's fairly simple for them to do. The next type of crossbow you can get though is when you got the poundage. Now you can go up to about 200 pounds or so, maybe 150 before you need help pulling these. You can't do it with your arms, so you do what you use, a goat's foot lever. You put it on and you can crank it back using a nice big metal lever there. Richard, he steps up, he announces his target and he shoots. Going for three yeah. points over the Earl's head. And a miss. Okay, Liz, puts a quarrel on. You don't shoot arrows at crossbow, you shoot quarrels or what? And she announces the helmet. the helmet on the right hand side. 
You had to have what you call a windlass on the back. A nice cup to go on the back with a crank, and you'd have to crank it up like this. That causes a huge bump because of the speed of reloading. And crossbowmen will be able to loose and a bolt once every minute or so, maybe slightly less. In that one minute, a decent longbowman would lose a minimum of 12 arrows in that same amount of seconds. So, Jim, do you have your quarrel on? Who are you going for? The little yellow guy on the breastplate on the left. And a miss over there from Jim. Nice game, Samuel. Blue star. Blue star. On the right hand side. There's a blue star. Just oh. There you go. Oh. I don't think it is. No, I'm going to It's very close. So they're reloaded and they're going to go again. So nice go for some decent points on the targets. They're going to go to the blue again, I think. That gives them only two points for it. But put some points on the scores. Unless, I think, Jim, go for the same part target. Yep. Oh! Right, left hand into the target at the back. Sam steps forward, goes for the blue star. Oh, and a misfire. Now this is the other problem with crossbows. It's all down to how that shrink contacts with the back of the crossbow bolt. He's going to replace his crossbow bolt, and we give him that arrow again. That bolt again. That quarrel. Sam is ready. Steps up. Now you can see the shooting like this is quite like a gun. You look down it and you're yeah. hitting it, they said. Scoring some points for the team. Big Ben scores for the blue team! Well done to River Avon that Ben absolutely loves. He loves watching this little bit down here. Um, yeah, really good shot. Yeah, really good shot. Yeah, I think it's a bit too much. Yeah, 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 it's a bit too that one here. We actually found out that because uh, that, we was wondering about these things here. In fact, that was a proper bridge across um, the long there. Over the, over the years, it's just through wear and tear that sort of thing. So the fact that used to be a main road, I don't think it was yeah at one point a lot along there. Yes, Ben, you know right? um, That used to be the. Uh... The old yeah. Yeah, made it, but yeah, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, that, that's what it was, and obviously then, opposed to people there, just put that into their garden, so, yes, you learn something new every day, didn't you? But yeah, because we saw actually a picture in the castle, in the actual castle, of what that was like when it was a proper road. Yes, Ben, is that pretty? Is that nice and central down here for you? It's nice actually hearing all the water crashing against there as well. Well, then, Betty, we can find any eels. Apparently, eels are supposed to be quite known in this river, as you can see from down there. And you probably like it as well because the sun's actually reflecting on the water as well. Yeah, he was absolutely fine watching the other show, wasn't he? And some kids just barged in front of him, and that started them off. Lots of rude people out there. There is, isn't there? We've had a couple of meltdowns from Ben, that's why he's put his helmet on, and some, some people still stare at him. It's really. Yeah, so. People don't realise that when someone's disabled, they're not always in a wheelchair. I know. So if I put his hat back on for him, they let him calm down. We've got him down here, they want him to calm down, so I'll take his hat back off him. So he's, he's in no one's way here, is he? We've got all day and stuff like that, so. Yeah, there is, there's a lot of rude people. There is, really, really loads. Um, of all the years we've been coming to Warwick Castle, the first time I've actually seen it like this, the water being this slow, haven't you? So I don't know what's it's this, I really haven't got a clue. It looks like someone threw their Christmas tree in here, yeah? doesn't it? So, but, um, yeah, it's all nice, still, peaceful, calm. Yeah, so comment down below if you know the, why this has happened, because, again, it's... I don't know, what do you reckon's happened down here then, darling? Probably, but this is the River Avon, so I don't understand how. I really do. Oh, it might be, but yeah, you see the things over there. It's so lovely. It's lovely, peaceful down here. 
<laughs> yeah, probably work. Uh, no, because they use flint. No, they didn't grow Christmas trees. Well, it is a Christmas tree, is it? Yeah, it is, it is a Christmas tree, yeah. So, going to run this way. Looks a bit muddy down there, though, doesn't it? On that bit there. Reminds me of the, um, we went to, um, where did we go away? When it was like this, muddy like that. Oh, it was my head, wasn't it? The beach is like that, isn't it? When this, when this, when the tide comes right back in again. Yeah, this, this is really, really. Well, they're going for you. So looks like got some sort of bush or some put a tree in here as well, actually. Got big massive rock. Yeah, so lovely, so lovely down here, so nice and quiet. So we, we like, so we're just gonna let Ben take his time along here. Yes, Peter. Sorry, what's that? Got some. Hi, look. My drink is spilled in my coat. Are you up, darling? What's my, matter? My drink spilled in my coat. Oh, yes, one thing. These straws and these Capri Suns are hopeless because they're paper. And like I said, Sammy's still got half his drink left, but his, his straw's gone. Here you go, Sammy. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, Mum, Ben. These blooming ben. things made by. I do, they're made by actually. Come on, Sita. No, it's not. He's not. Look, he's happy down here. Bless him. Look, he's, he's watching the sun on the water, darling. That's what he's watching. Well, then, guys, that brings Wednesday's vlog to a close. And as we end Wednesday, I'd like to say a big happy birthday to my father-in-law, Paul. Yeah, it turns 70 today. Yeah, it's my it's daddy's to... birthday. He was 70 today. It's funny to know that when I first met you, you was only, what, oh, where are we? 2024, 24 years, so... Taking what? How old was he? I don't know how old he was actually. But yeah, 24 years ago. So 47. Yeah. Yeah, 47. I first knew. <laughs> well, that's quite scary, isn't it? It really, really is. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, he um he wasn't really knowing what he wanted. But like I said, he was, he was about having a given party. He didn't want that. So he just had the, like all the family there doing it for a bit of a tea party type thing, which was nice. Yeah. He was a big, massive Oxford United fan. And um, this birthday cake wasn't it? It was done auction night. It was really nice, actually. Yeah, anyone from Oxford United is watching. Give him some free tickets to celebrate his seventieth. Yeah, seventieth birthday. I'm sure he would absolutely love that, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Like I said, we had a lovely time. Um, obviously, we brought him a cup with seventy on, didn't it? So seventy, now officially a grumpy old man, and he's like thinking, "Oi!" <laughs> I but, feel yeah. like that at the age of forty-three. I do actually, but yeah. Well, you're and a grumpy I'm, old man, now, are you? No, grumpy. <laughs> no, it's for like grumpy. You know what I mean? Grumpy old woman. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it sometimes. But like I said, we went to Warwick Castle today, and it was all right, wasn't it? Uh, uh, you know. I was expecting a bit more from it this time because like last year it seemed to be a bit more enjoyable but the art, what's it about? yeah but Warwick Castle's got a lot of their grass areas all cornered off and it's like no one can go on there it's like you know what's going on it's is like, it something to do with the concert they're having there? But the, I they're the probably, concerts, sold, probably sold the middle bit after a concert company where they can't touch it I thought the concerts are down bit where they do the driving cinemas yeah so As Cheryl anyway. said earlier on, we had a bit of a meltdown with Ben earlier on. It just, you know, too many people around him and he just lost it in a way. And um, he wasn't very happy, was he? Oh, so he could, no, he wasn't very happy. But then, um, as soon as he got back home, he calmed himself down. He actually, yeah. he, he enjoyed being at Mum and Dad's so didn't he, for the party and stuff. Mum brought him uh, his own gluten-free pizza and he was well away jumping on his gluten-free pizza, bless him. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so it wasn't the greatest, you know, we all really said we were going to go there if there was something like a special event on. Like and uh, today, today is... I just didn't find it very interesting, really. But anyway, like the video, guys, comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and uh, happy birthday, Paul. Bye. We'll see you soon. Bye.